All right, happy Tuesday, everybody. I have three things for you this week. One, a long-term review of the Castelli Free Arrow 4.0 bib shorts. Two, a uh, summer training and racing update. Want to have a discussion about whether or not you think racing is actually going to happen this summer? I thought it was, but maybe it's not. Um, and number three, train road group workout of the week. Um, so we're keeping these Tuesday videos quick. Free Arrow 4.0 bibs. Pros and cons right away. Pros. Fantastic overall. Fantastic fabric. Great little details. I love them. They're really good. The chamois rocks. Best part about the bibs. And three, the overall durability has been pretty good, especially given sort of like the kind of riding that these are intended for. Um, cons. The durability is not that great. And yes, I know what I just said. Uh, two, I don't like the shoulder straps. And three, the price. Um, so one, fantastic fabric with great little details throughout. Um, these are one of Castelli's highest end pairs of bibs. Um, quick, super quick background. I've ridden in a lot of bibs. Um, Segoy, two times you, Giordana, black bibs, Castelli, a bunch, Pearl Izumi. The Free Arrow 4s are some of their highest end bibs. The, the marketing thing that they really want you to buy is these arrow dimples that make you faster. Um, you know how I feel about that. Um, but if you ignore that, they're, they're, they're really good. So they're a pro tour level bib. So like Chris Froome and those sorts of people are wearing these. Quick sizing reference, I am six foot 155 on a good day. Um, this is a size medium. Castelli runs a little small. Uh, in medium, they are a tight compressive fit in a good way. I could not get into a small. Large would probably be fine, but I think that Castelli would put me in a, in a medium. The fabric is awesome. It, you know, these are 13, 14 months old, not at all see-through. It's super strong fabric. Um, it doesn't fold weirdly. The fabric is seriously excellent. Um, it feels great. I wear these on hot days and they breathe well. I wear them on cold days with leg warmers and you can feel a little bit cooler in these versus some other bibs, but um, these are these are really good bibs. Uh, number two pro, the chamois is properly excellent. So the chamois is like the star of any bibs, right? This is the Progetto X2 chamois, whatever. Uh, it's got a bunch of holes in it, which is supposed to increase ventilation, and I believe that it does. I've worn these on a lot of hot rides. I wear them indoors on the trainer. That's where these have spent the majority of their time. Um, and the chamois feels seriously good. It's not uncommon for bibs to have multiple densities of foam, but what these do that I particularly like is they have what they're calling like elastomer inserts or something. I don't know if that's the same as a gel insert. They're not calling it a gel insert, but even after 13-ish months, they're still springy. The foam has not collapsed, which is awesome. Um, the outer layer of the chamois is uh, physically separate from the foam inside, so you get good movement. The chamois is seriously really good. I love the chamois on these. And then lastly, the overall durability has been good. So, you know, a little bit of context. This is a high-end bib that's, you know, designed for performance, not necessarily longevity. High-end does not necessarily mean that it's going to last a super long time. If you go down to a mid-level bib with, you know, good construction but thicker materials, realistically that's actually going to last longer than these. But these have done very, very well, I think, given the sort of fabrics that they're using. They're, they're working well. For a year of intense trainer rides, uh, they're, they're doing pretty well. Cons, I think some of the fabric is too lightweight for normal people. So this goes back to like, they were designed for the world tour and then they sell them to us normal people. So for instance, like this, this mesh, sort of like the upper half of the bib, I think you can probably see, I've put my finger through this mesh a couple of times. This mesh is, is just way too thin. I don't like it. It has no support. It doesn't spread the load out at all. I'm not a fan. That leads into the shoulder straps. There's a couple of things that I don't like about the shoulder straps here. One, they're this mesh. So again, they, they offer, they don't spread the weight out at all. A lot of lower end bibs use a webbing. I think the webbing is so superior because you can see it even in my fingers, right? You get this really thin mesh with this hem on the side and it just collapses and all the weight, like this is, this is what the shoulder straps do. So I'm six foot in a medium, like I said. These shoulder straps are just long enough, just long enough. If you're taller than I am or you're in a small, eh, you're probably not gonna like them that much. I genuinely would prefer the lower end fabrics that are sort of found 
on like my tri suit, for instance, where like it still has a hem, but like it, this actually spreads the load out, right? Like this, this is superior. Um, and then lastly, the price. These are two hundred dollars. That's a lot for bibs. Now I will say, I have wasted a lot of money trying to save money, and the fact that these are two hundred dollars and they've lasted me over a year, I don't love it but they're comfortable. These are just starting to almost wear out a little bit. Uh, the, fat, the, the stitching that connects the chamois to the outer part of the bib right here is wearing. I think I can stitch this and I think I can save these, but there is another option. Castelli makes another bib called the Endurance 2, which uses the exact same chamois, but it's heavier weight fabrics. It solves the shoulder strap issue. I have actually owned a pair of Endurance 2s, but they were a little too small for me. Uh, the Endurance 2s are also really good. Uh, if you search around, you can get the freeze. I bought those for 150 on sale, um, but they retail at 200. Um, but the Endurance 2s come in 40 bucks cheaper. So the Endurance 2s, if you're looking at the Free Arrow 4s, they're great. If you want to save a little money, the Endurance 2s should also be on your shopping list. In short though, Free Arrow 4s, get a big thumbs up. Summer training. Uh, so overall, just going not too bad. I'm curious if you all think that summer racing is going to happen because I have. I have thought that summer racing was going to happen, um, but I'm starting to hear people say things like they don't think summer racing is going to happen or, or like races in spring aren't going to happen. So, I mean, I want to be safe. I want racing to return safely. I think I'm just going to have to accept whatever we get. You know, I'll freely admit Ironman 70.3 St. George. I don't think I'm going to be in good shape for it. I'm not running much right now. I basically can't swim. And I think my bike is, is, bike's making some progress, but I would just love to actually get out there and spend time with actual people that aren't virtual and be out on a race course somewhere warm. So if it happens, I don't care about my time. I just want to experience it. It's been almost two years since I've raced, which is insane. Uh, last Tuesday, I did three minute VO2 max work in trainer road. If you've never done them, they're hard. The first minute, it's challenging, but it's not too bad. Uh, minutes one through two starts to feel really hard. Like if it ends at two minutes, you're you're gonna be happy it ended. Minute three, man, every 10 second block is a fight, um, but they get you faster. So, and that's the value of structured training. You don't push yourself to those limits just out on the road in general. Um, and this isn't a trainer road plug. This is a the value of structured training plug. Uh, I, I rode pretty, intensively for many, many years before getting into structured training and structured training just opened up a new world for me. So if you're new to structured training, I suggest giving it a shot, which leads us into number three, the trainer road group workout of the week. Had a ton of fun with those of you who showed up this last week. Thank you for attending. This weekend's is the owl plus one on trainer road. So remember Sundays, 11 AM, you can follow my Strava. I will always post the group workout codes there. These videos, group workout codes are in the description. You can hit the RSVP link. It's an hour 15, which seems to be sort of the sweet spot that I'm picking these workouts for. 84 TSS, 0.82 intensity factor. It's a bit of a challenge, but you're not gonna, it's not gonna blow your mind. My 71 Schwinn Suburban restoration is done. I might be the only one in the world who cares, but I am so proud of how that bike turned out. I've got a really cool video coming and a really cool story about that bike, which I'm really excited to share. Uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do, because I'm really into it. The big videos that are sort of in progress right now, one about the effects of machine learning and artificial intelligence on training and racing and how that's going to affect things. It's, I think there's some really cool stuff there, but there's some interesting challenges as well. And then my super heavy carb week, uh, trainer road ramp test here in three to four weeks. And that's where we're at. Hope everyone's racing and training is going well. If you have any questions, you know what to do. And I will see you next week. Bye.